आपको निगमन सोच के टी टॉक ट्रेन ऑफ थॉट विद सीरीज ऑफ एन एपिसोड विद डॉक्टर अनिल प्रेडो अ मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट पर्सनालिटी एज अ यूरोजी विच इज कंसर्न ही हैज बीन अ डायरेक्टर इन यूरोजी विद आई एम एम ए एस टी एंड ऑल्सो पास्ट प्रेजेंट ऑफ यूरोजिकल सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया एंड ऑल्सो अ पास्ट प्रेजेंट ऑफ मुंबई यूरोजिकल सोसाइटी वेस्ट जोन एंड आई एम अ चमूर पास्ट प्रेजेंट एंड इट्स अ ग्रेट इनसाइट वॉट वी आर गेटिंग फॉर टी टॉक ऑडियंस सो वेलकम बैक टू दिस शो and now in fact for the benefit of an audience like uh, can you throw some light in terms of what is a kidney and how it functions well kidneys are two organs they are bean shaped organs uh, like uh, two c's and uh, they are almost in an adult or about 10 cm in length by 4 or 5 cm in width mm-hmm. they are nothing but filters mm-hmm. so your blood uh, whatever you eat and drink ultimately is digested in the stomach and in the small intestine and ultimately it is transferred digested with juices um can uh, uh, and then ultimately transported through the blood stream mm-hmm. in your blood stream is where the micro uh, microscopic ingredients whether it is your fat proteins uh, carbohydrates whether your you know essential elements which you require in your body is transferred to the various places mm-hmm. your unwanted stuff has to be excreted Mm-hmm. So excretion takes place uh, in three ways. Mm-hmm. One is whatever your intestines don't want to keep after absorbing it, throws it out through the gut. That's when you pass the stools, mm-hmm. or whatever your and also the liver, mm-hmm. which has bile that also excretes bile and certain things are excreted through the bile and that also goes through the gut. Mm-hmm. And kidney is a filter where your blood. the artery which supplies the kidney goes into the kidney and the blood is converted into urine mm-hmm. so the unwanted stuff is excreted through a filter mm-hmm. so it's like a chani through which the artery blood flows kidney forms the urine the microscopic the you know glomerular uh, uh, glomeruli mm-hmm. uh, they uh, work in the kidney at the microscopic level and form urine and the urine trickles through the urinary tract from the kidney ureter into the bladder and then excretes out mm-hmm. so that is what your kidneys do kidneys maintain the balance between what has to be there inside the body and what is not required in the body, in the body. and therefore if anything goes wrong with the kidney mm-hmm. then what is not to be what is not to be in the body starts remaining in the body in simple language oh, that and it starts producing problems because it is remaining in the body mm-hmm. so not only that as we know water our body itself is 65 to 70% is made up of water in different places different forms mm. so water is the predominant form which what you see in the urine mm-hmm. but it is not just water which is excreted in the urine you have calcium phosphate uric acid oxalate citrates many trace elements everything will be you know ex- excreted through the urine mm-hmm. so that is what the kidneys do so the kidneys are just like so many organs in the body kidneys are also a lifeline because they are uh organs which allow the exchange to take place between what the body needs and the body does not need and the moment it starts not functioning well it creates a lot of disorders in the body mm-hmm. so this is how the kidney and urinary uh, system should function like okay so uh, the most common thing stone like what is a stone and how it is formed like again as i said kidney is a filter mm-hmm. agar aap ke chhani se aap chai ko filter karenge to mm-hmm. you know small small granules will remain in the chhani mm-hmm. if the granules are small Mm-hmm. they will filter through the chani mm-hmm. if the granules are not small they are thicker they are muckier they are muddier mm-hmm. then the small small uh, crystals mm-hmm. will aggregate in the corners mm-hmm. of the portions of the kidney where they will ultimately become into a stone mm-hmm. so small crystals will aggregate become bigger crystal will become a small stone which will aggregate and become bigger stone mm-hmm. so they are microscopic to begin with and mm-hmm. they become macroscopic by the time they start retaining in the kidney mm-hmm. and these are again calcium oxalate citrate phosphate uh, so many such components mm-hmm. which normally should get excreted out of the kidney I but see. on its way they find a nice place in the kidney and they start accumulating this muck mm-hmm. and that is how the stones form I said, what is the precautionary measure one should take, like maybe during summer and winter, like you know, when uh, people they tend to intake less uh, water, like you know. Yeah, which is as you said in your question lies the answer. If you need to, f- if you need your filter to work well, it should be thoroughly, you know, filtered. Right. That means your fluid intake should be copious. Mm-hmm. So these are the common things, simpler things which everyone can do. Mm-hmm. That in summer you are going to excrete a lot through your sweats, mm-hmm. so your urine production is going to be less. 
mm-hmm. which is all right for your body you are sweating it out but for your kidneys it is not all right because kidneys should be well flushed with fluid intake mm-hmm. so that they filter and they work continuously right. so the more they work more they trickle the urine mm-hmm. the less likelihood of the small particles remaining in the kidney nice. that is the principle of treating smaller stones mm-hmm. you just ask person to take a lot of fluids continue routine activity the smaller particles will pass out mm-hmm. with only a lot of fluids intake or with some medical assistance Correct. with medical therapy mm-hmm. but if you take lesser fluid mm-hmm. and then your kidney is not able to excrete those smaller smaller particles they will start retaining in form stones nice. if any excess uh, intake of and water can it harm mm, well it, anything in excess mm-hmm. will harm nice. so you should not be over excess mm-hmm. so you will be able to tolerate maybe 3 liters of or 4 liters of uh fluid intake mm-hmm. easily mm-hmm. even in summer and sometimes rarely 5 liters but you can't be having 10 liters of fluid so correct. automatically it's abnormal correct and that will cause pro- pro- uh, problems of over hydration correct so more fluid intake will cause other problems which is correct. like your sodium balance potassium balance all your electrolyte balance will go haywire nice so nothing in excess is good for anybody correct and in fact come many times people they hold urine for too longer like so yeah that that, so. that is also a very interesting question you put up mm-hmm. see your urinary bladder is a storage organ mm-hmm. and it has got what is called as a capacity mm-hmm. and it has also got a, a very good quality called as accommodation mm-hmm. so when you say capacity of the bladder means that is a capacity the bladder is used to holding or we hold comfortably mm-hmm. then it will start giving you signals ki look i am full please empty me mm-hmm. that is when you start feeling the sensation of passing urine now ab circumstances may be such that i may be in a train or i may be in a lecture or i may be watching a movie and i can't immediately go to pass urine because i've got an urge so the brain gives you some time because it realizes that no you're not in the your circumstances are not correct that is what is called as accommodation Mm-hmm. so your bladder can accommodate some more so after it has reached capacity correct correct and that could be another 100 ml say another 200 ml say mm-hmm. but beyond that accommodation it is not comfortable uh, beyond that even if your lecture is going on or your train you will run and you will look for a toilet and you will want to pass your mm-hmm. otherwise you leak correct correct when you say leak means what that's because you are overfull overfull yes. if the bladder is overfull it can't retain it will give correct. you strong signals strong mm-hmm. sensation to pass your mm-hmm. urine you start moving around you start becoming uncomfortable you mm-hmm. start looking for an outlet mm-hmm. so that is your bladder accommodation has been crossed mm-hmm. so these are simple parameters when your bladder is empty the pressures in the bladder are low mm-hmm. when your bladder fills up the pressures in your bladder increase is increase only when your pressures in the bladder increase will the urine come from a high pressure to a low pressure area mm-hmm. so your outlet correct is controlled by a sphincter mm-hmm. it's a normal Uh, involuntary sphincter which you cannot control and there is a voluntary sphincter which you can control so there are two sphincters mm-hmm. one is not under your control one is under your control mm-hmm. the one you can control you can hold tight mm-hmm. one you cannot control you can't hold tight when the pressure is high that control automatically opens mm-hmm. so you have not to allow that bladder pressures to increase so high that your bladder starts you know suffering because of that Correct. So what happens is when you slowly over a period of time keep delaying the act of passing urine your bladder starts holding more and more accommodating more and more more and more and then the bladder muscle mm. loses that function of voluntary contraction oh. and therefore when it acts it is not able to act completely Complete. so it empties but not completely mm. and you start retaining more and more urine so okay. that is not only the problem so you retain more urine despite emptying and that is a reservoir for pus cells to form for bacteria to grow for urinary traction to form mm, i see so one should also the pressures which are high in the bladder can sometimes translate to the pressures going backward mm-hmm. upward to the ureters and to the kidney mm-hmm. that is what is called as a reflux so normally when the urine comes from the kidney to the ureter and into the bladder there is a valve at the junction of the ureter and the bladder which does not allow retrograde filling of the ureter so mm-hmm. you it's a one way valve mm-hmm. urine will come from top into the bladder it from bladder will not go back mm-hmm. but when the pressures go high or if the valves are abnormal mm-hmm. the urine will go back from the bladder into the ure- ureter into the kidney mm-hmm. and that pack pressure to the kidney is an infected urine which mm-hmm. can affect the kidney damage the kidney that is what is called as vu reflux or vesico ureteric reflux or reflux nephropathy where your kidney start getting damaged mm-hmm. this happens commonly in childhood to uh, 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 children whose you know valves are abnormal or to patients who allow the urine to fill up rapid, you know build up build up for uh, too much so these are the dangers good 
great i think thanks a very well insights on uh, as far as the kidney which is concerned a lot of uh, i'm sure like even if you are taking the water it has to be adequate water and it has to be balanced intake of a liquid which is there so now what are the various cancer which are affecting the urological system common cancers as i said is every organ of the urinary tract is known to have cancer so the cancers of the kidney are of various types but i won't go into those details so you can have cancer of the kidney you can have cancer of the drainage system of the kidney which is called transitional cell carcinoma so it can be in the calyces pelvis the ureters it can be also in the urinary bladder so you can have cancers of the urinary bladder you can have cancers of the prostate gland and you can have cancers of the uh, uh, end organ physical organ that is the penis itself mm -hmm. so these are all the different uh, cancers in the urinary tract in urology that we deal with as we grow older chances of getting uh, bladder cancers and prostate cancers are in the high mm -hmm. and kidney cancers you would get in the younger age group more more often than in the elder age group mm -hmm. and the common hallmark of these is uh, now in the last 3 decades they get found only because you get investigated Mm -hmm. you don't get symptoms early in any of these cancers so no. unless you go for minor symptoms and be report to your doctor and get investigated you will not pick them in early stages oh, that's I why see. it's very so imperative we if you see blood in the urine ever which is not explained by any other cause you must report to a doctor get investigated by a simple urine test by a simple ultrasonography or sometimes doing a ct scan you will be able to pick up these tumors early and you will be able to do definitive treatment which could be surgery which could be anything else if required mm -hmm. to cure you from your problems okay so what is the uh, like the blood in a urine what can be the symptom for blood in a urine well the symptom itself is seeing red colored urine yeah, yeah. when you see a red colored urine it starts urine, like so it starts because of uh, the commonest causes of seeing blood in the urine are uh, a urinary tract infection mm -hmm. you imagine a sore throat mm -hmm. a sore nose or a sore eyes mm -hmm. what do they look like they look red red because the entire organ becomes congested congested blood vessels become congested, congested. so that imparts color to whatever secretion is coming from that area yeah. so if you have a, if you have a running nose and you are blowing your nose heavily you might see a blood streak in the nose also correct, correct. similarly so throat if you look under a magnifying glass you will see it's all red angry mm -hmm. red correct, and you correct. get a conjunctivitis it is red isn't correct, it correct. so any organ inside in the kidney in the ureter bladder urethra will become red mm -hmm. and it will impart a red color to the urine All right. So it's like I would give an example. If you put drop of ink in a bucket of 15 liters of uh, water, yeah, right. the whole bucket will look blue. Correct, correct, correct. So even a small drop of blood will come through the urinary tract, will give either a faint pink, bright pink, faint red, bright red, and if it's severe bleeding, it will form clots. Clots. Yeah. So the bleeding is enough to collect in the urinary bladder, it will form clots. Clots. Yeah. And then you will form not only red urine. brighter red urine will form clots clots yes. and if that clots block the urinary passage which is likely to do mm -hmm. you will get your urine will get blocked Correct. and you will need to urgently run to a casualty to put in a catheter to drain that urine out mm -hmm. so these are the commonest things now when they are associated with other symptoms like fever like burning sensation mm -hmm. like urgency or frequency in urination mm -hmm. or pain in the lower part of the tummy they are called as urinary tract infection Mm -hmm. the bleeding could be coming because of the urinary tract infection mm -hmm. common term you may have used is cystitis word used urethritis mm -hmm. so prostatitis all these cause or when you get severe infection in the kidneys you get gsa pyelonephritis mm -hmm. so an acute chronic pyelonephritis or a chronic pyelonephritis can also cause bleeding in the urine which is called hematuria mm -hmm. but if you have hematuria blood in the urine with no other symptoms mm -hmm. that is painless hematuria mm -hmm. then you have to think of a tumor anywhere in the urinary tract and the first thing you have to rule out rule is out. a tumor yes. similarly stones mm -hmm. because the stones move they cause friction mm -hmm. in the urinary tract can also produce blood in the urine yeah and there are infections of different types in the kidney you know you have various terminologies which nephrologists uh, you see common in their practice or pediatrician see in the practice mm -hmm. called glomerular nephritis pyelonephritis or different types of uh, nephrotic syndrome they can also cause blood in the urine would great says a great insight for tito cordes for listening to you, uh, you on this platform i'm sure like uh, a lot of uh, precautionary measure uh, measures what uh, they can take as far as the kidney always a very important part of an uh, body like you know thanks a lot for sharing your valuable insights for tito cordes Uh, I'm sure, like it's the kind of an insight. So what we are getting from Dr. Anil Pedro, exclusively on this T Talk Human Search, it's more of an value uh, addition for our T Talk 
audience if you like this particular episode go to www.ttalk.net subscribe like the channel as much as you can watch out uh, for another episode with dr anil bread on ttalk ek bun soch ke till then thank you very much sir thanks a lot for your time thank you very much cheers all the best